In almost every application, LED lighting is fully taken over. You can't even buy tungsten filament bulbs in California anymore aside from specialty applications like appliance bulbs or photo floods. Every bulb in your house is likely an LED or a pigtail CFL if you haven't swapped those out in a few years. Uh, and the film industry is no different. Pick a set, you're going to find an LED fixture. Roger Deakins famously uses regular tungsten bulbs in a large ring light from time to time, built simply out of a bunch of porcelain sockets fixed to a wooden or aluminum hoop, more recently, um, to give off a really nice, soft, warm light. People talk about this ring light all the time here on the internet, and that got me thinking, is that quality of light even possible with LED bulbs? You see, LEDs are not a great replacement for traditional tungsten bulbs, color-wise. Um, they're insanely more efficient. Um, they're generally made of plastic and therefore more robust. They don't get hot, and, for, uh, and they last for thousands and thousands of hours. So there's a lot of benefits to using um, LED bulbs, especially in household applications. But one thing that LED technology has yet to come to speed with um, is simply matching the spectral output of traditional sources. It took forever just to make decent warm bulbs. For the longest time, uh, daylight balanced LEDs were the only thing that you could reliably um, rely on. At the beginning of the year, I got myself a Seconic C800 and was metering damn near everything I could find. I'm fascinated by gathering information like a proper nerd, and being able to evaluate light sources in an objective way is, for me, crucial in ex uh, executing my duties as a DP. If I want to achieve certain looks, or more importantly, avoid cheap ones, I need to know as much as I can about the light I'm deploying in the scene. So swinging back around to the Deacon's ring, um, I had made a small one about 12 inches across, composed of seven bulbs maybe a year ago, and it does a great job of putting out a decent amount of light in a small yet soft package. I did some basic research and found some Cree bulbs that seemed to do the job of giving me a soft, warm light without any ugly spikes or weird color shifts. But I didn't know that. I was taking someone else's word for it. So I had to get down to the bottom of it, and recently I did. You see, with modern cameras being so sensitive these days, I figured it'd be worth seeing whether or not uh, you use these household bulbs um, once again in a cinematic context. Obviously, we, we've used them in practicals before, um, but can we use these in these bulbs that we find in the household goods aisle um, as film lights? So what I've done is, uh, for your evaluation, is I've gone to a few local stores and grabbed 15 bulbs off the shelf. These are bog standard consumer lights. I didn't go to a hardware store just because I knew um, I'd have way too many options and would end up spending like hundreds or even thousands of dollars on light bulbs just for a test. So um, if someone wants to sponsor that endeavor, uh, I await your email. So I simply hit up Ikea, Amazon, and Ralph's um, as well as just kind of went around my house and grabbed all the random bulbs I could find. I then went into a dark room and held the bulb about 18 inches away from my color meter for each measurement. And so here are my findings, starting with a tungsten and daylight reference. And uh, also be sure to read my article about the various metrics used here to get a better idea of what's going on. That is linked in the description. There is also a video version of it, but the article's got more pictures. I actually found this bulb at Ralph's, um, which is an appliance bulb intended for use inside an oven and is a true tungsten filament bulb. Um, as you can see, the CRI, or the RA value, is essentially pegged at 100 across the board. The spectral output is a smooth gradient from very little blue to 100% red, and the TM30, which is this little circle here, uh, shows us that there's very little, if any, hue skew, giving us values of 100 for both RF, uh, which is on a 0 to 100 scale, zero, 100 being the most accurate, similar to CRI, and RG, which is 60 to 140, um, and 100 being neutral and anything above or below that representing desaturation or oversaturation, respectively. Um, CRI is kind of an old standard. I've talked about this on the uh, channel before, but that doesn't evaluate enough of a light spectral output and it doesn't have enough points of reference. So these days we kind of want to use the TM30 or TLCI. Um, I'll be mentioning the TLCI here uh, of each bulb, um, which for this bulb, shocker, is 100. Uh, as with RF, the TLCI scale goes from 0 to 100 and represents how accurate a light is based on a camera's observation of it versus CRI, which is based on human vision, 
which is kind of irrelevant um, to filmmaking in the strictest sense. But also, like I said, it isn't very thorough in the first place. So here we've got some charts uh, of the sunlight as measured on a completely clear day here in Los Angeles. And as we can see, we've got nearly the same values as the tungsten bulb, although the sun does appear to be uh, sort of filtering through the atmosphere a little bit and not giving us the smoothest spectral output. Um, the sun can vary wildly in color temp and uh, quote unquote correctness based on where you live, um, which is why it's nice to have one of these color meters because um, if you're trying to match the sun coming through a window, let's say, with a sky panel, for instance, and you just set the thing to 5600, is that accurate? You know, what What if the sun is kind of low and it, it's going through some shit in the sky and it's more in the 5000 area? What if it's early morning and it's actually 4500? And how do you know that the sky panel is putting out 5600 when you set it to 5600? Well, with a color meter, you can test that. And with some LED fixtures, you can use XY coordinates like you can on the sky panel. Uh, and those you can just put into the light, um, getting the values from any reference source. And that should exactly put out the light from the reference source. Um, for your edification, the XY coordinates for the tungsten bulb are 0 0.4643 and 4124. And the sunlight sample is coming in at 0 0.3328 and 0 0.3458. Moving on. Uh, our first bulb is an IKEA LED air, uh, which I was told was pretty accurate. And as we can see on the charts, and what will be the case going forward, the spectral output isn't a smooth gradient from blue to red like our tungsten reference and is a little more orange than red overall. We've also got a touch more green and a small spike of blue. Um, that R9 value here, uh, everyone always likes to talk about, is also lower than I'd like to see, but that being said, we've got an RF of 93 and an RG of 99, and the color temperature is only 58K off, so that's not horrible. This, however, highlights why we need more modern color meters, because while the CCT is nearly spot on, the actual spectrum of light that's being output is not the same. The TLCI of the IKEA LED Air is 90, which is the bottom of what I'd want to see in a bulb used for filming. Uh, technically, the TLCI people say 85 or more would require no color correction, but I like to see 9s in my results. Um, the SSIT, the Spectral Similarity Indexed Tungsten, is 81, which means that on a scale of 0 to 100, this bulb is 81 similar to a true tungsten bulb. SSI was invented by the Academy to compare sources and probably is the truest way to figure out if a bulb is going to look the way you want, assuming you want a standard tungsten or daylight source. But you can just compare any old sources against each other if you're trying to match one to the other. Now this bulb is pretty rough. I found it in a drawer and I don't know where it came from. But as you can see, the results are less than ideal. The spectral output is almost the same as the LED air, but the CRI is all over the place. You only have to worry about CRI when it's bad, honestly. Um, and the TM30 chart is looking squishy with an RF of 87, which is below where I'd want to be. I wouldn't even really want to use this bulb in my house, if I'm honest. The TLCI of the YDJ light is 72 and the SSIT is 75. Now, this bulb was sent to me by the good old folks at the LA Department of Water and Power. Um, they've sent the residents of LA a few bulbs over the years, and I'm kind of wondering if the YDJ bulb is one of them. Uh, but this is actually uh, marked LADWP, and as you can see, it's bad. It's bright, but it's bad. An RF of 84 and a CRI of 82 make it a nearly immediate no for me, but the TLCI of 68 seals the deal. Um, the SSIT of 75 doesn't help either. Uh, so that's a no thanks, LADWP, love your work though. This is another IKEA bulb I had lying around the house. It might be a riot and it's in bad shape. This one's pretty old and as we can and will see, IKEA has upped their game. But if you've got any of these lying around your house from maybe like five years ago, uh, it's time to switch it up. With an SSIT of 77 and a TLCI of 66, this one is a near bottom of the barrel bulb. Uh, LADWP again tried uh, and only really marginally improved, inching an extra three RF points, 1.4 CRI, and four TLCI out of the bulb. Uh, near as makes no difference, basically. Also, it's nearly 200 Kelvin off its target color temperature, which is kind of wild. Now, this is a real IKEA riot, and I just recently bought this, and this one's got a new problem. Look at this spike. While it's in the area we'd theoretically want it to be instead of like green or blue, it's a spike nonetheless, and this and the rest of the output is woefully low. 
we're not getting a nice smooth spectrum of light from the bulb. Uh, instead, it's acting almost like an orange party light or something, and that's not what we want. If you're going the IKEA route, definitely get the LED air. Now, this one is interesting because I recently saw GE puffing their chest about having these newly designed bulbs that are better than the rest um, due to a lack of a blue spike in the spectrum and being more accurate to daylight or um, tungsten in this case because they offer both. Um, and I think I saw that that press release the day they put it out. So being the, oh yeah, prove it kind of guy that I am, um, I immediately went and found myself uh, one of each of these to test. And lo and behold, they're not lying. There's definitely less of a blue spike than all the other LEDs on this list. Uh, the intent of which, according to GE, is to help regulate sleep since blue light um, keeps us awake. Uh, and they've accurately delivered on their target CRI of 97. With a TLCI of 95, an RF of 95, and an SSIT of 86, this bulb is definitely a great option for budget film lighting. Also, it's nearly bang on the 2700 Kelvin target, only off by 4 Kelvin, so I'm very impressed there. Now, this is the daylight balance sun filled bulb, and the story is nearly the same as the tungsten one, uh, doing a decent job of matching the spectral output of the sun with an SSID of 84, and the TLCI is a whopping 99. With an RF of 98, CRI of 98, and the TM30 chart looking nice and smooth, this one's even potentially uh, a better option than its tungsten counterpart, assuming you need a 5000 Kelvin source. But you still have gels though, right? And this one, Cree, what the fuck happened? 200 Kelvin off its target temperature, a TLCI of 70, an SSID of 66, and an RF of 84, that's a no. I feel like I should say here that th there are way, way worse bulbs out there. Um, I measured one as an example in my aforementioned article about the metrics we've been using to evaluate these bulbs. Uh, and again, there's a video version. But as far as this grouping is concerned, the Cree Daylight Bulb isn't performing how I'd hope, especially in uh, comparison to its tungsten counterpart. Look at this massive blue spike. So moving on, the uh, this bulb is much better. As we can see, the TM30 chart is relatively smooth. The temp is only 48 Kelvin off of the target, and our uh, CRI is a decent 95, but it has a low R9, which I don't like. Now the TLCI is 87 and the SSIT is 77, so it's not perfect, but it's leagues better than the daylight version, and we're not seeing too much of a hue shift on the TM30 chart scoring a 92. These would be a solid budget option, in my opinion, as an 8-pack is like $23, which is pretty low compared to, say, one of the sun-filled bulbs, which is $11 each. Uh, you get what you pay for, though, obviously. Now, Philips didn't really impress me with any of their bulbs, um, but let's kick it off with this big globe thing. Um, all of the other bulbs tested look nearly identical, kind of like this, uh, which is sort of why I wanted to do this test in the first place. Uh, but this one is kind of a big plastic as glass um, frosted globe and it's got these fake like LED filaments in it looking like short incense sticks um, that you can find clear ones but in any case we're seeing some skew on the TM30 chart scoring an 87 and with an SSID of 69 we're not wowing anyone a CRI of 90 TLCI of 88 whoop do wouldn't use them with other options available uh, this one has the same sort of shell as all the other bulbs you know the same look um, and while it's almost better, it's still not good. That random set of orange spikes doesn't make too much sense, especially compared to the previous bulb that at least only had the single spike. Um, and a slightly better CRI of 92, a worse SSID of 66, and a nearly identical TLCI of 89 makes this another no. Um, vaguely better TM30 at 89 though, so there's that. Here we've got the tungsten balanced version of the above light. And hey look, our spike is still there. Uh, the temperature is essentially bang on, only drifting by 18 Kelvin, but as we can see, our spectrum is very off-putting and our accuracy is low. It's got a TLCI of 77, an SSIT of 70, a TM30 at 89, and a CRI of 92. This also goes to show why we can't really trust CRI numbers and should only be a concern if they're low. Our final bulb, the tungsten version of the weird globe light, is good? It's got an SSIT of 81, a TLCI of 89, a CRI of 92, and a TM30 of 92, and only 11K off the target. What happened? The spectrum even looks normal for an LED. Philips, you confounding company, you. Figure out what you did with this light, improve on it a little, and then make that happen for the rest of the lineup. At least for your offering at Rouse. For your convenience in the article, uh, again linked in the old description, I've made a chart of all the findings from this little test. Um, I'd also like to highlight the fact that the real tungsten bulb got an SSIT of 88 
and the actual literal sun got an SSID of uh, 98, so that's information. Uh, then again, I didn't let the tungsten bulb warm up at all. I just kind of turned it on and metered. That being said, um, I'm thinking with that information, maybe like 85 and up is where, where you're looking for um, with the SSI numbers. To reiterate, we're generally most concerned with the TLCI and TM30 values of each bulb for cinema use, but the SSI is an interesting metric just for knowing what the ideal would be, spectrally speaking, um, if trying to replicate true tungsten or daylight. So there you have it, a non-exhaustive but slightly representative look of what results you could expect if you were to deploy one of these household bulbs on your shoot for your next project. At the very least, you now know what kind of bulb you should use in your practicals. Uh, my choice would obviously be the sun-filled bulbs from GE, but the IKEA, Lead Air, and the Cree tungsten options um, aren't terrible. Uh, whatever you do, don't trust your local power company to supply you uh, with the good stuff. Like I said at the top, I'd be happy to go to a hardware store and buy out every bulb in the place if someone would spot me all the cash to test them out for a more exhaustive list. But for now, this will have to do. Uh, my next project is to head up to film tools at some point and test out all the actual film lights there to see who's leading the way and who's not cutting the proverbial ketchup. Uh, one thing I do know is the sky panel results may surprise you, so watch out for that. Um, but until then, uh, that's kind of the uh, mini project I put together here. I hope you found that um, informative and mildly entertaining, and you will see me later.